for more standard and more involved problem inv involving calorimetry, uh, let's look at a fairly simple um, situation that might have happened a hundred years ago. Somebody makes a horseshoe, he makes it out of iron, he's what's called a blacksmith, we've all heard of blacksmiths, they made horseshoes. Uh, let's see, so he makes this horseshoe, um, and it looks something like that. And it's made out of iron, it weighs, oh, let's say it weighs one and a half, one and a half kilograms. And to cool it down after it's been heated up to 600 degrees so that we can, he can, um, beat the horseshoe into a horseshoe shape. The blacksmith throws it into a big vat of water with about 25 kilograms of water inside. Okay. So that, that's basically what our problem is. All right. So there's a physical picture. A helpful drawing might be what we did in class. So as you recall, we had a situation like this where we have the change in the heat on one axis although it's really just a conceptual axis I'm not saying it's anything starting from here or going there um, but it will be useful and we have the temperature here so the initial temperature of the horseshoe is this one all right and the initial temperature of the cold water is this one. And there's a lot more cold water than horseshoe. So there's a lot of cold water, right? That's what I just said. So the mass of the cold water times the specific heat of the cold water is a fairly big thing like that. And so it goes like this. And the final temperature is somewhere rather close to the um, temperature of the cold water. So the water is going to heat. It's going to increase in temperature that way. Okay, so that's what's going to happen to the cold water. And this is the amount of Q uh, gained, the amount of heat gained by the water. That is exactly the same amount of heat as is lost by the horseshoe, which has to have a big long one of these things over here, so the heat is being lost. So that's minus Q. Same amount of heat because the energy is conserved. The energy has to go somewhere and it's going from the horseshoe into the water. That's what this bar chart means. And then we can come down here and we say, okay, we have our mass of the horseshoe times the specific heat of the horseshoe. Okay. So the area of this thing is supposed to be the same area of that as that thing. And the um, final temperature is going to be here much closer to the temperature of the water because we want to be able to pick up the horseshoe. Now we're going to assume some things. We're going to assume that you know the, there's no um, phase change for any of the water. There's no steam coming out or anything like that. Uh, we could do that. That would just make this a longer problem. And I have to call my wife in about three minutes, well, about three minutes ago. So ID. What do we have in this problem? Well, we have a um, given. We have a horseshoe. It has a mass MH, is what we called it, and we said that was 1.5 kilograms. And it has a specific heat. And this we have to look up. It's a specific heat of iron, and that's 448 joules per kilogram per degree C. And 
we have a tank of water. Probably a barrel of water. That's the way the blacksmith rolled. So we have a mass of water, m of the cool water is equal to 25 kilograms. And we have a specific heat, again of water, which is 4,186 joules per kilogram degree C. And again, we're going to assume this doesn't change over the entire uh, temperature, temperature range that the water is heating up, which is probably fine. Okay. So uh, finally, we want to find the final temperature, the equilibrium temperature. It's equilibrium temperature. We'll call it Te. And it's that guy right there. Wasn't that lucky. All right, so what kind of um, problem is this? This is calorimetry. Um, the main equation is Q is equal to MC delta T. And what we're going to have to do here is we're going to say Q, Q1 plus Q2, right, is equal to zero. You remember that. Um, in fact, in class, we said Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to zero will actually give us the equation. Um, the final temperature is going to be equal to um, M hot, C hot, T hot, the initial temperature of the water. I forgot to put that in there, uh, uh, up here. So TH is originally 600 degrees C, and the water is originally um, 25 degrees C. We're calling it water, we're calling it cool water. Okay. Plus MCCCTC. So this is just the weighted average where the weight is the mass times the specific heat, which is the rate, well, that's, that's the heat capacity of the material. That's the rate at which the um, object, um, weight at, uh, at which the object is going to pull up water or pull up, is going to pull in heat to raise temperatures. So, that's what we've got there. Uh, very, very simple. Now it's just um, putting some numbers in things. And this fails because my wife ran out of patience, by the way. Okay, let's see if I can pick this up where I left off. Uh, where was I? So, I just came here and I looked at this, uh, the equilibrium temperature. I called it TE rather than TF like I did in class. So the equilibrium temperature was the weighted average of the temperatures. Uh, the weighting factor is the heat capacity of the material. The heat capaci capacity is the product of the mass times the specific heat of a material. Um, the full name of the specific heat is the specific heat capacity. All right. So. What we see here is that this MC for the water has two, two components that are each at least one order of magnitude larger than the M and the C for the um, horseshoe. So the equilibrium temperature is going to be much, much closer to the, temper the initial temperature of the water than for the, temperature of the initial temperature of the horseshoe. Uh, and we see this again with the um, areas of the areas of these two blocks have to be the same, and so that's all that's going on here. Um, all that's left is the boring part. So if you don't see this, it's because I couldn't figure out how to append these, and I said, "Hey, 
All that's left is the boring part, which is plugging in the numbers. So let's see, what do we have for numbers in here? The mass of the horseshoe is 1.5 kilograms. The um, specific heat of the horseshoe is 448 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. The temperature, the initial temperature of the horseshoe is 600 degrees C. Okay, and we add, add in the um, mass of the water. We have 25 kilograms of the water. Uh, we multiply that by the specific heat of the water, which is 4,186 joules per kilogram degree C. And then the initial temperature of the water, which is 25 degrees C. Okay. So now we're going to divide that all by the weighting factors, 1.5 kilograms times 448 joules per kilogram per degree C. And we can add in the other weighting factor here, which is 25 kilograms times 4,186 joules per kilogram per degree C. And then we just multiply these things out. To multiply these things out, we do the top and the bottom. Um, lots of fun watching me do that, so I won't show that to you. Instead, I will just tell you that this is 28.7 degrees C. Like I said, much, much closer to the initial temperature of the water than to the initial temperature of the horseshoe. Thank you very much.